With only 350,000 citizens, Iceland is tiny in population terms, but it's large and strikingly majestic in landscape and geography. It's one of the youngest landmasses on the planet and is still being formed, straddling the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates. It is an island that grows larger every year, and that's why it is one of the Earth's volcano hotspots. Iceland's volcanoes have been both a blessing and a curse. The destructive power is obvious, but this force has also been harnessed by the islanders, powering their homes and creating natural wonders that help draw in more than a million visitors a year, like these extraordinary geothermal pools. This is Iceland's world-famous Blue Lagoon, and it's nothing like I've ever seen, let alone been in. Um, and yet this is the result of Iceland's thousands of years old volcanic history. And just over that smoky ridge over there is an active volcano that has caught the world's attention over the last six months. As though COVID wasn't enough, after laying dormant for 800 years, the Fagradalskfjeld volcano spectacularly erupted on the 19th of March. Just five miles away, residents of the small fishing village of Grindavik held their breath and prayed their community would be spared. Hi, Adler. Hi. I'm Raggy. Welcome. You? Thank you very much. Before the volcano started, uh, we had the the earthquakes, and that was not nice at all. Frightening. Yeah, it's frightening, yeah. And of course, when I was a kid, it was always on your mind when you woke up, when you were afraid, but uh, uh, as I say, this, you get just used to it. Six months on, the volcano is still going strong with regular eruptions. But on the day I hiked up, the lava flow had paused, but that didn't stop throngs of visitors from making the journey. Well, that's my first view of the lava, and you can see how it's just come right down the mountainside to form this lake of molten lava that's kind of solidified now, and I'm going to go down and have a look. And we just, like, uh, just had to have, like, an invasion of two million people. Local <laughs> journalist Valo Gretesen told me why the volcano continues to be a magnet for adventurers and tourists from all over Iceland and the world. It was insane. <laughs> it was like uh, going to like a festival or, or something like that. The Icelanders do this at the bank holidays. We go to the countryside and many get drunk, not everyone, of course. Uh, and it, it's, we're, we're like breaking loose a little bit. It was exactly like that. And people were very loose. You got to stay on ground. To prove his point, here is the Icelandic rock band Kaleo recording a spectacular music video as the lava erupted behind their lead singer. It may look like a Hollywood blockbuster, but this is real. From music videos to weddings, Fagradalskfjeld became the world's first social media volcano. I met with Anna Greta Johansson, who officiated the wedding between John and Schumad Lady. I had a river of uh, lava running behind me and I could almost feel my ass cheeks melting off. <laughs> it, it was so warm to stand there. What draws people to this volcano? Why has it made Iceland such a tourist magnet? Yeah, it's just the power. It is just the... You can really see land being shaped and formed uh, here uh, in, in real life. And we can still see tourists and hear them still going up. There. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think it will, even though it will stop, uh, it will be a, a, a place for people to visit just to see uh, fresh lava. I mean, it's new land forming. Whilst my trip to the volcano was less of a spectacle as the lava flow had temporarily subsided, sitting across from the fissure filled me with a sense of nature's power. It's amazing to see the extent to which the landscape here has just been changed by the volcano, you can still see the smoldering crater over there. But this whole valley, now completely covered in lava, used to be, at its depth, 100 meters deep. Even on a quiet day for the volcano, I saw many tourists from all over the world as we hiked to get a view. And of course, tourists always need to be fed and to be helped when they get in trouble. How's business? 
Business is good. Yeah. Thank you. Helgi runs a hot dog stall at the foot of the volcano, which has provided a lot of business, which COVID had taken away. You don't feel afraid from me? The, I mean, the lava's just like five minute walk from you here. <laughs> no, no. This is nothing to be scared of. It's a slow flowing lava. It's a tourist lava. And we were joking that it would be so great if there would be an eruption <laughs> the minute Iceland would open. <laughs> and what happened? That, exactly uh, that. Exactly. These four days are worrying me a bit now. <laughs> you wanted to get going again? Yeah. <laughs> The Guardians are a volunteer search and rescue team, and the volcano has kept them busy too, but without the profits that Helgi has made. We have been dealing with lost and cold tourists, and some people have broken their ankles and hips, all sorts, all sorts of trouble. Everyone's been telling us, you know, uh, the people who run restaurants and hotels and shops, it's been great for business, yeah. but for you guys, you want business to be bad. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, uh, we have been joking around uh, in the rescue team that we missed the earthquakes. Why? Because then we could be at home. <laughs> uh, and this lava flowed for a long distance towards the sea. To learn more about Iceland's volcanic heritage, I met with Ari Trausti, a geophysicist, author and Icelandic MP at one of the country's famous lava tunnels. If you take the average figure, there is a volcanic eruption every fourth year in Iceland. Every four years? Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> let's say uh, during our history, we have had about 250 or 300 eruptions in Iceland. That's an insane number. We haven't had uh, a catastrophic or very serious eruption since uh, 18th century. But uh, then again, this could happen any day. It's easy to see the exciting fascination with Fagradalskfjell's eruption and its attraction as a tourist destination. But Ari encouraged me to travel to an island that bears the scars of the dark and tragic side to Iceland's volcanoes. But it's been proclaimed as the worst catastrophe Icelanders have faced in their 1100 years of history. Nearly 50 years ago, catastrophe struck the island of Jaime as a two kilometer long fissure opened up, spewing magma and ash across the island. All 5,000 inhabitants had to flee. The eruption lasted months. Many wondered if they would ever return to their homes. The whole of the town has now been covered with a layer of black volcanic ash. Jaime's tragedy is commemorated at the Eldheimer Museum, where survivors show visitors what they endured during the volcano of 1973. Wow. Yes, careful. So this is uh, the remains of someone's house from 73. Yes. This family who lived here, it was very close to the fissure. So they had a very narrow escape. When you look at uh, tourists yeah. coming to Iceland, yeah going near current volcanoes and having a sort of party atmosphere, what does it make you think? To be totally honest, stupid people. <laughs> well, it would be my first, because people are not careful. This is uh, the nature. You cannot deal with it. Iceland makes a lot from its geology. But whilst it's been a huge economic draw, its people live with a very real threat. As exciting as this eruption has been after a pandemic year, there are concerns that this could be the first of a string of eruptions across the southwest corner of the island, home to two thirds of Iceland's population, people who'll be waiting for the next inevitable eruption.